Stitchy friends, welcome to Cross My Stitches. My name is Jackie and today I'm going to show you how I finished these Prairie Schooler Santas. I had several people, oh, I'm going to keep it in the light so you guys can see it. Huh? There we go. I had several people ask me about the finishing on these Santas and how I did it. So I'm going to show you today how I completed these so you can do them as well as you, if you like. And um, it's a step-by-step -step process, and some of it is, um, I learned from Vana. Of course, Vana, the Twisted Stitcher, she's absolutely awesome, and she shares a lot of her finishing techniques. So a lot of the stuff that I will show you is just watching bits and pieces of her different videos. I can tell you now that the bow is from her, how she makes her bows, and... Um, of course, how to do a flat fold and stuff like that. And I just modified it to um, work for what I wanted it to do. So let's get started. So the first thing is I stitched my Prairie Schooler Santas on a 36 count flax linen, a Swigert linen. And um, you have to go by what you stitched your piece on. So um, my piece ended up being three and a quarter by four, nope. nope, let me go back, hold on, where is my ruler? My finished pieces were three and a quarter by, yeah, four and a quarter, that's right, three and a quarter by four and a quarter. So I knew that I had to um, make the first, and the first one is on a mat board. So these are mat boards, so they look like, this, you can buy them at Hobby Lobby. That's where I get mine. And hold on a minute. If I can get rid of that thing on my screen. Nope, it keeps coming back. Hmm, strange. Okay, so these are Cranston. They're from Hobby Lobby. I've also got them at Michael's. And they're just a matte board. And that's what I use most of the time to finish with, whether I'm lacing or I'm gluing. These are what I use. And that's what each of these Santas is put on. It's put on a mat board. And as you can see, if you look at mine, I do, I figure out exactly the center of my board. And then I figure out exactly the center of my fabric. I also mark it with a pencil. And then I lay my fabric down. I lay my mat board on top, line up the marks I made on my fabric with these lines. And that's how I figure out how to get it pretty decently straight. It's not perfect, but I'm happy with it. So, so I put these on mat boards and these are done with Aileen's Tacky Glue. So I glue them, here you go. I glue them with Aileen's Tacky Glue. I've got every light on in the room, trying to make it bright enough so you guys can see everything. And this is how I keep my, my Tacky Glue. I keep it upside down in a little ball jar so that it's always ready to, to work with. So as soon as I pull the cap off, this stuff starts coming out. So that's how I keep it. Anyway, back to this. So I mat these, I glue them down, and then I'm going to show you how to make this back piece, this, okay? And this is homespun. And I really love the homespun because it matched the tone of the Prairie School of Santa's colors perfectly. So as you can see, it's that same red, that same green that is used in the Santas is that what's in the homespun. So it matches just perfect. It's got a little bit of yellowy gold, which is the gold. So I think it was a perfect match and I really love that I found it and it would work for these. So this is the homespun that I use and I match the homespun on just flimsy cardboard. Now this is, um, I got these in sheets on the back of um, paper. So normally this backs, you know, it could back scrapbook paper, it could, it could back anything, it was just packaging. Um, you could also use cereal boxes. And if you feel like they're, flim they're too flimsy, and these are, these are pretty flexible. Um, you could cut up a cereal box and use a cereal box. Okay, this part, this part is not touching your needlework. It's touching the fabric, so I'm not overly concerned about it. 
Um, the Cranston matte boards are acid free, so they are the ones touching my fabric. I will also say that I use warm and natural batting underneath this. So it's got just a little bit of, so it's just not flat, flat on the uh, Cranston board, the matte board. It just gives it a little dinky bit of batting. But I don't use it on this part, I just use it for my Santa. So I put my pieces out, and I like to cut on the diagonal. As you can see, these are cut on the diagonal. It gives you that, I like that look of the diagonal look, so this is how I do it. And these are cut, okay, so let's go back a little bit, because I'm getting ahead of myself. These are cut four by six. Now I cut these, the mat, the mat board here, let's, let's go all the way back. Okay, so this is three and a quarter by four and a quarter. That's my design. The mat board is three and a half by four and a half. I wanted it to be just enough to get the design because I don't want my ornaments to be too big. So I'm trying to keep them down to a minimum and making sure that they still look nice but all my borders are showing. So this is three and a half by four and a half matte board. Three and a half by four and a half piece of warm and natural. Okay, and then I stretch, I put my piece, glue it all down. So that's the size of that. When I cut the cardboard, this flimsy backboard, it is four by six. So it's a half inch bigger this way, but it's an inch bigger wise because I need to be able to cut this out to make it look like a tag okay so what it is is this is a four by six so I cut these these are four by six pieces of board so there it is there okay and it fits there four by six and then I make a mark at the five inch mark at one end so five inches here five inches here because I'm going to cut this angle. And what I use to cut that angle is my Omni Grid. So if I lay my board down, I'm going to put it upside down because it makes it easier for me. I'm looking for a 60 degree. There's a mark on your Omni Grid that says 60 degrees. That's what I'm using to cut this out. So I lay my line. Let me get all this out of the way. I lay my 60 degree line on my line here okay and I just slide up until I am at you can see my little tick mark there that's where I want to be I want to make sure that 60 degree line is perfectly straight and that I've moved it up enough that the pen the pencil line is right there hold it down take my knife and I'm going to do this a little backwards hopefully it doesn't slide and just cut. It takes a couple more cuts because I'm doing it backwards. There it goes. So there's the first one. And then I'm going to do the second, same thing on the other side. I'm going to flip this around, line up my 60 degree again, and then find my little mark. Everything is straight, hold it down, and cut it. And there you go. So now I have two that should be exactly the same. There they are. And now we're going to wrap those in the homespun. So what I do is I lay my homespun out. I put this on the diagonal. So what I'm looking at is here, where this is all the same, to make sure I'm on the diagonal. So It doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be, you know, so it, it looks, the fabric looks like it's on the diagonal. Took my cutter, I just cut it off. Okay, and then I cut all this down, because I'm just going to wrap it around. Just a 
Tip off. showing you this I'm going to tell you right now I am NOT a finishing expert I'm just showing you how I completed these so there's one All the little scraps I'm gonna do the second one lay it out try to get it as straight as I can So now I'm going to glue these down. So I'll lay it down, get it where I want it, and start gluing. And you're going to get this glue on your fingers. So I keep these little scraps so I can wipe the glue off my fingers. Let's put this one down first. Press and just pull back. seams here, put my glue up here, and put glue here, and then fold it, press, pull. I'm not worried too much about getting glue on my fingers because this is the inside, it's not going to show, I'm not touching the back at all. go and then we'll do the sides okay, now give it a little push make sure it's up there snug I do the same thing I fold it over and just start pulling down Anybody can do this. This is not difficult to do. You can see I'm keeping my fingers on the cardboard so it doesn't slide. So as I'm pulling down, nothing's moving. So I'm always pressing down on the center of this. So I'm going to flip it over. See, there it is there. Get that all limpies all over it. Okay, and we're going to do this side. have a little bit like this that's sticking up, I just put a little glue under it, press it back down. Okay, and then the bottom part. This one here, I do, I put a little dot underneath each side here. And I pull this over just a little, because I don't want this flap to show on the edge. So if you give it a little tug, and just put it a little bit off center so it's a little, little bit of an angle. It'll make it so it doesn't stick out the edge. So there's one, there's two, press them down, give them a minute to adhere, and then we're gonna run the glue on the bottom. the same thing. I just grab it and pull it to the top, pull it straight back, and then press, 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 press. Okay, and then if I have, like I said, these little flaps, I just stick some glue, stick it down, hold it for a minute so it goes through all the layers. Press, 
press, press. And remember, the edges of this will not show because when we put the two pieces together, we are going to put this cording around the edge. So you don't have to worry about um, it showing at all. But we want to make it as neat as possible. So there's one. So that's what it looks like. Okay, and now we're going to do the second one. And do the same exact thing. Lay it down on there. Make sure I've got it centered. And we start with the top. Press, press, press. Of course, it's, you know, I put, run my nail across it to run a little seam to make it fold a little easier. Blue, blue, blue. Right. Put it on both sides here. Okay, fold it over. Press, press, press. Fold it. I'm going to stop here and put a little bit under here because that's lifting. And it's driving me nuts. So I'm going to press it down. Wipe my fingers off on this scrap I have. Oops, a little more glue. Fold it over. Press, press, press. Press it down. Okay, we'll turn this up a little just to make sure it's up there. And run our glue. Fold over, press, 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 press. Especially in these corners that are folded over, give them a good press and hold for a second. Okay, and you see the glue's not too bad on my fingers. And when I'm done, I'll clean them off before I go further. Okay. Fold over. a little more glue. Hold it down till it seeps through up. There we go. And then the last part, right? We put our two little dots. This one might be a little more difficult because I cut it short. But I just want to pull it over enough so that it doesn't stick out. I'm going to take my scissors and just chop off this little bit that's hanging over. There we go. And then again, glue, right? And if you have a little, see how that's, I don't know if you guys can see that, how it's sticking up just a little. Just stick a little glue under it, stick it down. Some of my fingers, there we go. And then just run your glue. straight back and press. Straight back and press. Okay, I cut that one a little short, but I still can get it to work. Gluing the corners if they're sticking up a little. Okay, so now there it is there. I've got them both set. They're going to go back to back like this. Okay, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to glue them back to back. And the easiest way that I find to, to spread the glue is just with my fingers. So I'm going to run a bead of glue all the way around the outside of this. like this. Okay, and then I'm going to just spread it. So I'm going to spread it to the edge 
And again, the edges are not going to show because you're going to put cording on, so don't panic. But if you get close to the edge, just pull it back a little. Okay, I'm holding it down. I'm just spreading my glue. I want all the edges to seal. And if I get too much, I just pull back a little. This is Aileen's Tacky Glue. It does dry clear. See, like I got a whole bunch right there. So I'm going to flip this up. Try to get that off of there like that. Get rid of that. Lay it back down. And keep going all around the edge. I want to make sure all the edges have glue. Or real, as close as I can get because I want it to seal. You can see if I have too much, I just kind of press it off in the middle. Doesn't matter. Move it maybe over to here where it's not that much. So there's one. Take my little rags here. Wipe my fingers off. Okay. And it's, you know, if you rub on your fingers, it comes off. And then do the same thing with this side. I'm going to put this on here. While I'm doing that, I'm going to put some in the center of this one, and I'm not going to rub it in. I'm just going to put it there. Because when I smush them together, then they'll go together. So there we go. Put the top back on that. And hopefully I won't need any more. We'll see. Spread it all out. you get to the edges, you want it all on the edges, especially these corners. Okay, and again, I think I went a little over, so I'm going to pull it up and just roll it back away from the edge. Turn it around here a little. Right, I'm trying to make sure I'm getting some on that corner. So I have all the corners, I have all the edges that I can. Okay, so now I'm going to press them together. Get all this stuff off my fingers because I don't want glue on the other side. Okay, I'm going to sit here and flip it. Lay it on top. And then pick it up. Make sure that it lines up perfectly and press it all together. Now, if you have anything coming out, you can certainly just wipe it off. Okay, and squeeze it, make sure nothing's coming out major, no oozing. And now I have, you, could, you need to put this under something heavy so it presses for at least 30 minutes, 40 minutes. So I have my silhouette machine sitting next to me, so I'm going to lay this underneath my silhouette machine, which is a little heavy. I'm going to let that dry for a little bit, and I'm going to put you guys on hold while that dries. Okay, so while we're waiting for the back of the ornament to dry, we're going to do the ribbon. So this, this is how I did the ribbon. And this, I followed um, Vanna from the Twisted Stitcher. I watched one of her videos on how she made one of her ribbons, and this is how I did it. So I have a piece, and my ribbon is only single-sided. So um, probably would work better with double-sided because you wouldn't have to worry about how it lays. But mine is single sided, so this is how I'm doing it. I have one piece that is a 12 inch piece. You guys can't see that, can you? It's a 12 inch piece. The second one is a 5 inch piece. I have my little bell, and I have a piece of red thread that matches, and it's knotted at the end. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to fold this so that the satin side is showing on and the tails are showing the satin. So this is how I'm folding it. Um, if you have one that's double sided, you can fold it any way you want. I like my bows to be three inches. 
So I measure on my board down here and I just readjust until I get to the size that I want. One, two, three, so that's about right. And I'm gonna lay this under here to hold it for me because then I'm going to fold this over and over. So I'm just making a little circle and then I'm pressing in the center. So that's my second bow. So these are my two bows. I'm gonna put them together. Okay, I'm gonna make sure that it's even on both sides. I'm gonna pull this in just a little. So that's how it's going to look. And I'm going to take my needle and go right up the middle, right in the center, without poking your finger. Pull it through and then hold and wrap and just squeeze and wrap. So I've got it a couple times now. I'm going to twist it back the way it belongs. So you can see there it is now. And I'm going to pull it tight. And wrap a couple more and then I'm going to put my bow on and I want to make sure that I'm also go down there going through the bell a couple of times one two one more time there it is my bell is on there nice and tight my bow is there and once you get it done, you can pull it to wherever you want or puff it out or whatever. So I'm going to go back around again and I'm going to put a knot. Stick it in here somewhere, right? And get it in there and then put your little sewing knot, right? Just once, twist it. Well, I didn't leave myself a lot of string or a lot of thread here, so once. Okay, so leave your thread a little longer than I did. <laughs> I'm trying to get it through a second time because that really secures it when you wrap it around twice. There we go. And then just pull it tight. And you can cut it off. Have sharp scissors too. They're not that sharp. So there it is. So now I'm gonna I can pull down the, the feet a little bit if and I can trim those. So I like to trim them at an angle. And I usually trim them about the same length as the edge of the bow. Alright, so there's one. Two. And then in order to keep them from raveling, you should do put them under the flame just a second. I just run it real quick because it does burn quickly. You don't want to burn them. Just enough to keep them from burning. And there's your bow. And then, of course, you can fluff it out. Put your fingers in them and just push and fluff any way you like. I've tried doing all different kinds of bows. Um, this one seemed pretty simple and worked. So that's what I ended up doing. So there's our bow that'll go on to our ornament. So we're still waiting for the other part to dry. So I'm gonna put you on hold again until that is dry. Okay, so we're ready to go to the next step. And we're going to punch a hole in the top of this. Now I have a We Are Memory Keepers Cropagile. And it is a hole puncher in an eyelet setter in one. You can get these at Hobby Lobby or Joann's or Michael's. I got this one at Michael's with a 50% off coupon. So they come in real handy if you do paper crafting and stuff. But I'm going to set eyelet in the top of my um, card to put the ribbon through. So and I have 30, how many Santas are there right now? 38 maybe? So I have a lot of Santas to do. So I bought one of these. And it has two sizes on holes. It has a large hole punch and a small one. And we are using the large one today. 
and I'm going to put my piece in. Oh, I got to unlock it first. Unlock. There we go. I'm going to put my piece in, figure out where I want it, try to get it as even as I can. And press. And that's it. And there's my fold. Out of my thing, there it is. There's the big hole out of there, and it does fray the fabric just slightly. But we're going to push that in so when we put the eyelid in, that it will be on the back side. So these are my eyelids, and I have some gold ones that I'm using, and I'm going to put that right through the hole. There it is, there. Make sure all that braid thread gets out of the way. Right, I might take my little scissors here and just trim off what's hanging. There we go. And then we put it in our crocodile to set the eyelet. And just set it in there and squeeze. And there you go. There's the back side. There's the front side, and now it has an eyelet. That's what it looks like. So now we're going to put our Santa on top of our piece, and we're going to do it the same way we did the other one. We're going to sandwich it on with glue. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to run our bead of glue all the way around. Right. And again, you want to make sure that you get enough on there to get it adhered. And this one you want to be careful with because I did not put any trim around the outside of this. So we don't want to get glue all over the place. So, But again, we're going to push it up to the edge and just pull in so that we make sure we get glue adhered really well along the edges. not to touch the front of your piece at all. Keep your work area clean so that you're not getting glue all over the place. And it does, like I said before, it does dry clear so it's not a terrible thing if it gets on because it does dry clear. So we got it all the way around there. So I'm going to use my little Scraps again to get the glue off my fingers. I'm not touching it, just rubbing it all off. Then we're going to put glue in the center of this one as well. And we don't have to mush it out, we just need to get it in there so that it secures it. There we go. And now, let's take a look. Make sure we get all our off of it and facing the right way and just center it and lay it down. There we go. Looks good. Press. And then once again, a heavy item on top of it. So I'm going to put my silhouette machine back on top of it for another 30 or 40 minutes. So I'm not sure where that cut off. So uh, hopefully you got some of this, of how I put the cording on. So as you can see, um, the first part here, this is where I started right here. So this is, and then I worked my way around putting the glue. Hopefully you saw all that. I'll go back and look and see. And then adding the glue all the way around to here. This is where I stopped. Okay, I have it pinned to make sure that it's staying on the piece until I'm finished. And then I move this over, saw where I had to cut this. And that's where I added glue on there and then started working the glue in to the roping. You can see it's still sticky from where I just did this. And I twisted and made sure, oops, I don't know what that is. Get that off of there. 
that the rope that the glue got soaked into the rope and I'm letting that dry now so I have to let that dry so that I can cut it and it won't fray so right now it's sitting waiting for that so we're gonna hold off right now give that time to dry it probably takes 20 minutes 30 minutes to dry and then we'll come back again okay so now we're getting ready to cut the cording so it's almost dry it's just about dry now and I'm going to measure across to see where the cording has to be cut. So it is right here. And I'm going to cut the cording. Okay, make sure that it's straight. I didn't get that exactly straight, so I'm going to give it another twist. There we go. And we're going to add the last bit of glue to secure this. it so that it touches the other one. Here we go. You can see that it is touching the other one. And I'm going to put two pins in and I'm going to let this dry. There's one. I didn't get that full in. There we go. So there's the two. And you can see I got a little bit of glue see that or not but I'm just gonna take my nail and just scrape it off okay so that none of the glue is showing okay and then again check and make sure that I have both ends touching there we go okay, I'm gonna put this one at an angle so it doesn't shift while it's drying there we go so now we want to attach our bow to our piece. And of course, if you want to put a charm, I put a charm on mine, right? You put your glue on your little charm and stick your charm up there. Um, but right now we're going to do our ribbon that holds it. And what I used was just a, um, this is like an organza ribbon. And I just took a piece that I thought was the right length and I cut it. And I have to poke this through, so I'm folding it in half so I can get it to poke through this hole. So there it goes. Okay, so now I'm going to pull this over a little bit. This is where I put my bow. So I put the bow in between on the one side. It doesn't have to be on both sides, just one side and pull all the way. It doesn't matter which side, so we'll leave it like that. So, and you have to pull it tight all the way through. So that's what holds your bow onto your piece. Okay, and I'm gonna flip it over. I'm going to knot this on the back. Okay, so stick this through here. And I'm gonna pull the knot all the way to the end like this. And then I cut off all this extra. So I'm just going to cut all that off. There you go. Now to get that so it's not at the top of your piece, I just pull my organza ribbon. So I just pull, pull, pull till it goes to the bottom. And there is your piece. There it is. So I'm going to glue my really quick, oops, really quickly glue my 2019 because that's when he was stitched to my piece. Just going to put a little bit of glue on it. And I'm going to take my tweezers here so I can hang on to it and put it in place. Put it right up here. Straighten it out. Give it a little press. So there it is. And of course you can see the glue, but it will dry clear. And then you can play with adjusting your bow when everything dries. So I'm gonna wait until everything's completely dry before I start playing with my bow. But once it all dries, you just pull your pins out and you're all set. There it is.
So I hope you got some information that you could use off of this video in order to do your own ornaments. It's not hard. You can do it yourself. Just one step at a time. Okay, and it comes out just adorable. Now on the back of these, you can see there's a little knot back here, but nobody's gonna see that. And on the back, I will put a little, um, I probably cross stitch my name and the date that I completed this and stick it to the back of these. I haven't done that yet, but that's the last step. I'm not overly concerned about getting it done before Christmas. So, but there it is. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or anything you didn't understand, please contact me in my email address below and I'll be glad to help you any way I can. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope everyone has a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I'm sure I'll be seeing you again real soon. Bye!